Hi guys, welcome back. Or if you're new here, welcome. I'm Megan, this is Chiron Equine, and I talk about all things breeding horses. I also talk a little bit about training them and coaching riders, but today we are on the breeding topic. I thought I would walk you through what I put in a foaling kit so that if you are thinking of breeding a mare, you can be prepared. I am going to break this down the same way I did with my first aid kit video, and I will link that up here somewhere if you haven't seen it. Um, so we are going to go through things that are already in my first aid kit, things that are must-haves, things that are nice to have, and things to talk to your vet about. So let's get right into it. Things that are already in my regular first aid kit. Number one, same as I said the last time, have your vet's phone number and your phone number and a backup vet's phone number taped right on the lid of your folding kit or on the front of your stall where it's easy for anybody walking by to see because god forbid you end up in a situation where your phone's dead or you're not there and somebody else is watching your horses and they need those phone numbers in an emergency just write them everywhere paint it on the back wall of your stall if it's not someone else's property just make sure it's visible after that, next things to have are a pen and paper. So I just have a pad of paper and a pen, and I like to have those on hand for foaling because you wanna be able to write down what time every stage of the labor and delivery happens in case something goes wrong and you need to be able to tell a vet about that later. Next thing I like to have is a thermometer. Um, that's mostly for taking, keeping an eye on the mare for the few days after foaling. For a tail wrap, some people use a tensor bandage or gauze, but I use vet wrap. So that is already in my regular first aid kit anyway. I like it because it's easy, it's clean, I don't have to measure it, I don't have to futz around with Velcro or tape or whatever. I'm gonna throw it out after, I don't have to wash it. I don't have to make sure I have enough time to wash it between different mares if I'm folding out multiples. It's just easy and straightforward. So I like vet wrap for a tail wrap. Um, gloves, rubber gloves are always in my first aid kit anyway, but that is really handy to have for your folding kit as well because it gets a little bit messy. So if you don't want that on your hands, just wear them the whole time. Some people just put them on to handle the messier bits in particular. Um, or if you need to do an internal exam, then that is also really handy to have for your mare's sake. Next thing that I don't have with me today is buckets. And I wanna have two buckets on hand for foaling. My wound bucket, my stainless steel bucket that I showed you in the first aid kit video is always present when I'm foaling because it's easy to sanitize really thoroughly. So if I need to use that for washing up the mare's udder or her back end because there's some bleeding or anything like that. I want that really sterile bucket for wound care. I also wanna have a bucket on hand that is not for food or water that I can put the placenta, the afterbirth in after the mare delivers because you're gonna to wanna to hang on to that for the vet to look at the next morning. Next thing that is really, really, really important to have on hand is a stack of towels. Don't go out and get all new towels for your folding kit. I ask all of my friends and family to just hang on to towels that they would be throwing out for me. So anything that's had bleach spilled on it or is ripped or is generally just ancient and falling apart. Those are the kinds of towels I like for my folding kit because I probably bleach most of them after every delivery anyway so they're not going to end up looking nice at the end either. If you don't have towels that you're getting rid of or that other people are getting rid of, then shop at like a Value Village Goodwill secondhand shop. Don't go out and buy new towels for your folding kit. So the rest of the things that are absolute must-haves for me but are not necessarily in my regular first aid kit are um, twine, and that is going to be for tying up the afterbirth so that mom doesn't step on it. I always keep a piece or two in my foaling kit no matter what because inevitably the day your horse goes into labor is going to be the day that once a year that somebody takes the entire garbage can of binder twine that we all have in the corner of our barn and finally puts it in the garbage and you'll have to go open a new bale to get a piece. So keep a piece or two of twine in your kit for tying up afterbirth. 
The other thing I like for tying up after birth is these long sleeve gloves. Um, a breeder that trained me for a number of years taught me to do that. So she just piles everything into the glove, ties it off with the twine and ties it back to the bit that's coming out of the mare. And I am happy to show you guys how to do that in the future. Next foaling season, hopefully I will get a lot more on video and I can show you guys some of those sorts of things. The other reason it's really nice to have long gloves is if you do have to do an internal exam on your mare for some reason, you're going to want some of those. So those are something that I buy from my vet and I just get like 10 at a time. I don't buy a whole box, but if I was foaling dozens of mares every year, I would just buy a box of them. Um, roll cotton that you can pull apart or small towels, which is what I keep around is great for scrubbing up the mare, scrubbing up udders, wiping baby's bum if necessary. So those are really, really handy to have. And again, don't go out and buy new washcloths, take an old towel, rip it into shreds or buy a roll of cotton if you want something disposable. What else have I got? Ooh, that one's important. Really, really, really sharp scissors or a scalpel. These are going to be really important in one particular emergency scenario, and that is called a red bag delivery. Now, you don't necessarily need to know how to handle a red bag delivery on your own ahead of time, but I promise you, you want to have these in your kit because if you have a red bag, even if your vet can't get there, if you're on the phone with them, they are going to walk you through how to handle it, and it is going to involve cutting through some really, really thick tissue. So you need to have something on hand that is capable of doing that. So really sharp. These are kitchen shears um, or your vet might give you a scalpel to just keep in your kit. And that's really, really important to have around. If you guys want a whole video on red bag deliveries or different foaling complications and how to handle them, leave me a comment and I will put that together for you. Next thing to have on hand is an enema. And this is going to be for the full. Um, a lot of the books will say fleet enema. Fleet is just a brand name. So this one, I don't know, it's either grocery store or Walmart brand um, and it works just as well. Some people will say baby enema or child enema. This one's an adult one. As far as I can tell, there's no difference in the size of the tip. It's just the amount of fluid. So it really doesn't make a difference. This is a sodium phosphate solution and I prefer that over mineral oil but you can buy both kinds so ask your vet what they want you to have on hand. The next thing that's really really important is again something I don't have on me because it's at the farm but iodine or chlorhexidine um, and those are going to be for dipping the foal's navel when they are born after the cord breaks and for a probably every four to six hours for the first day. Um, my vet prefers that I use chlorhexidine, so that's what I have now. Some people still use iodine. It is a little bit harsher on the skin around the umbilical cord. So talk to your vet about what they prefer. And then with that, you will need some way to get it onto the foal. Some people prefer a squirt bottle like this. This is just a condiment bottle from the dollar store and you can squirt it at the foal's belly. I prefer to dip them. So for that, I have a shot glass, it's just a normal glass shot glass. I like the glass because it's really easy to clean thoroughly, but um, if you need something disposable, you can get plastic shot glasses or shot glass sized Dixie cups from the dollar store and those work really well as well. Next thing that is a must have for me is a water-based lubricant like KY Jelly. Um, I use Vaseline usually for my thermometers, so this is just for my foaling kit, um, but some people have this around already for their thermometer and that's fine too. You just don't want to use Vaseline or mineral oil if you need to lubricate anything to do with the mare's backside when the baby's coming out. If you need to give her some help because baby's stuck or you need to lube up your hand to check her internally, you want to use a water-based lubricant like this. Next thing I want to talk about, oh, no, I do have one more thing. I almost forgot. This is Blessed of the Broodmares. This is a book that was published in, I wanna say 1971. Um, no, I'm wrong, 1978. 
This book is out of print. If you can get your hands on it, it is super, super valuable. A lot of the information with regards to medications and dosing is out of date because it was printed so long ago, but the pictures are fantastic and it's really great resource for looking at what normal deliveries should look like, what can go wrong, how to handle those sorts of things, setting up a safe polling area. So if you can get your hands on this, if you're really serious about breeding, this is something that's absolutely valuable to have. Next thing on my, so first thing rather, on my nice to have, but not necessarily um, necessary, on my nice to have list, first thing there is umbilical clamps. Um, I will put a picture up here of what these look like out of the package, just so that I don't have to open them and possibly lose them all now. This is a pack of 10 I got from the farm store. You can get them individually wrapped and sterilized from your vet, but these were like $8 for 10 or $5 for 10, and the ones through the vet in my area anywhere are about $4 a piece. So I'm not super worried about these not being sterile because what I will do if I need to use one is just pop it in the chlorhexidine in my shot glass before I put that on the umbilical cord. Now, this is not something you wanna go ahead and use without getting your vet on the phone and having them talk you through doing that properly because you can do it wrong and once they're on, they don't come off. So again, not something I would use if you don't absolutely know how or have a vet on the phone, but if you have an umbilical cord break that is bleeding and is not stopping, then this is really handy to have in an emergency. Next thing I like to have on hand, this also came from a racehorse breeder that taught me. This is this brand is called Equijug, but any electrolyte paste, this I get from the feed store. It was like 11 or $13. I have never had to use it personally. They've used it at the farm. I used to full lat a couple of times, and it's just a big boost of vitamins, electrolytes, amino acids. The reason I like to have this on hand is because sometimes after delivery, mares can look a little bit shaky, muscle trembling, and this is just a like a power bar for horses. It's gonna give her a little bit of a boost of energy and help her out. And for the like 11 bucks, if it expires and I don't use it, I don't care. It's a great safety net to have. You could also just give her a big bucket of water with some molasses and some electrolytes in it. That's an option as well. Next thing that is nice to have, I don't have one here, but I have used it a lot and I am going to buy myself one before next foaling season is a mare milker. Um, the brand that I've seen most people use is Utterly Easy, and I will put a picture of that wherever I can fit a picture of that. And they are really, really handy if you have to milk a mare for some reason. Either baby's not getting up and you need to get colostrum into them. Um, if you need to collect colostrum because something has happened to your mare and you need to get some into the foal while you're looking for a nurse mare. Um, or if you're freezing colostrum. So if babies had their good first drink and you decide you wanna milk off some colostrum to freeze for later for emergencies, then a mare milker is really handy to have. If you're only falling out one mare, it's not necessary. And you can make do with a 60 mil syringe and turn that into a milker. And if you wanna do a little bit of arts and crafts, let me know and I will show you how to make that. Next thing that's nice to have is a flashlight. And I bought a headlamp, this was a really cheap one, but if I'm foaling alone, I don't wanna futz around with holding a flashlight. Um, hopefully you're foaling in a nice, clean, bright barn, but if your power goes out or you're foaling out in the field for some reason, this is nice to have. Make sure before your mare is due that this has batteries in it and it works. Otherwise it's no good. Next thing that's a nice to have but not necessary is either ropes or obstetric chains. Now again, this is not something I would ever use without getting my vet on the phone, but might be handy to have in an emergency if you know how to use them. They are used for pulling a foal that is really, really, really stuck. And if that's your only option, then those are really handy to have to give you a little bit of extra leverage. But again, not something I am even going to explain to you how to use because that is between you and your vet and that is something that you should discuss with them. 
Next thing that is nice to have that the bigger falling farms tend to have is a full resuscitator. And that is a mask that fits tightly around the foal's face and usually has an air pump that depending on which way you turn it is either gonna suck fluid out of their lungs or push air in. In probably 75 or 100 foalings that I've seen at this point, we have pulled it off the shelf three times and never used it, which is good. I have not bought one. They are quite expensive. If you have a big facility and you're foaling a lot of mares, it's worth having for an emergency. What I did see used this year was an oxygen tank with a mask. Um, we used that on one filly and it did perk her right up and help her out after a really difficult delivery. So again, that is something that is very expensive, but might be very, very valuable to have on hand. And the last thing that is nice to have is your trailer already hitched up and ready to go. If you are heading into foaling season and you know you've got mares ready to go and you own a truck and trailer, leave it hitched up for the couple of weeks around when your mare is due because if you need to transfer to a hospital for some reason for a difficult delivery, 15 minutes you spend hitching up could make a world of difference in saving your mare or saving your foal. If you don't have a truck and trailer, have some phone numbers of haulers that will take an emergency call in the middle of the night because that's when most mares deliver and that can also be really, really valuable to have. Now, the last category, like I said, is things to talk to your vet about and that's because most of the things on this list are drugs. First thing I like to have on hand is banamine and that is an NSAID, an anti-inflammatory drug. Um, in Canada, we can only get it injectable or compounded, so that's why you need to talk to your vet because not everybody's comfortable giving needles and banamine, as far as I have been advised, should never, never be done in the muscle. It has to be an IV or you can give it orally. Talk to your vet about it. I like to use this after they have fold and after they have passed their afterbirth to make them a little bit more comfortable. It can also help prevent some complications if they don't pass their placenta completely. And while we're on the topic of passing the afterbirth, oxytocin is also really handy to have on hand if your vet's okay with it and if you're comfortable giving needles. I don't have mine here because it's in the fridge at the farm, but I will insert a picture. And oxytocin increases cramping in the uterus. So if your mare hasn't passed her afterbirth in the timeline that is um, safe, then you can start giving oxytocin at whatever interval and dosage your vet has told you, um, and that will help her continue to contract so that she can expel that afterbirth. Um, next thing to talk to your vet about is maybe having a tranquilizer on hand. And the reason this is important is primarily with maiden mares or first time mothers, where I have seen it needed to be used is in two different scenarios. Either the maiden mare becomes really aggressive to the people because she's feeling protective of her foal and you need to tranquilize her just so you can check over the foal, make sure everything's okay, help them out if they need it. Or what I've seen more often is first time mothers get so frantic about being able to look at their baby that every time baby goes to the back to nurse, mom spins around to look at them and keeps moving her udder further away from the foal and baby can't nurse. So sometimes we will give a mare a little bit of tranquilizer for that just so that baby can get those first really critical sips of colostrum before we leave them alone. Um, and then the last thing to talk to your vet about is wormer. Um, most vets will recommend that you deworm the mare with usually an ivermectin within the first day after foaling, and that's to protect the baby. Um, some vets want to do it for you when they come up to do your well foal exam at the 12 or 18 hour mark after delivery. Um, I have seen some vets give it to the mare and to the foal. I have seen some vets just give it to the mare and I have had some vets tell me to just go ahead and give it myself if I have it on hand. So ask your vet what their preference is going to be for that. Um, obviously, if you are having drugs on hand, then you also wanna have needles and syringes. I like to keep mine in a little Tupperware container that has a lid so that things stay together and that is really handy. That's what works for me. And I will just put this inside my full kit. 
if you have any other thoughts, if you guys have a folding kit put together and you've got something that I don't have here, I would love to know what else you use and why. Please leave me a comment. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content about horse breeding, go ahead and subscribe, like the video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you soon. Have a great day.